Mr. Decker, please read the title. Bill number 170963, an ordinance amending section 6301 and 6503 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled respectively food establishments and licenses and permits to revise licensing requirements relating to food establishments, including requirements relating to restroom facilities, service, and seating. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Well, thank you, Mr. President. And I'd like to start by thanking everyone for coming down today on both sides of this issue. For those who support the bill to raise their voices and say, we are so sick and tired of being sick and tired. And for those who oppose it, so that I have an opportunity to clarify misinformation that has been circulating from many different sources. But first, on background, this bill is the culmination of the 25 plus years worth of work that Councilwoman Blackwell has put in to address the unacceptable business practices that have been going on for far too long, and I thank her. Our office. Our office has worked on this matter for several years now, desperately trying to work with stop and go owners in my district to change their business model, which was met with silence from these operators. And in October 2016, we arranged a tour with LNI Commissioner David Perry, Health Commissioner Tom Farley, former Fire Commissioner Derek Sawyer, representatives from the Philadelphia Police Department, and staff from Liquor Control Enforcement. That tour left the attendees flabbergasted. We asked for help, and it was delivered in the form of this bill. I want to thank the tour, uh, tour attendees, and I want to thank Mayor Kenny for their unwavering support and encouragement as we prepare to take this most important vote. There's been so much confusion on this bill. Some is simple misunderstanding, and some is the intentional spreading of inaccuracies. But I want to be clear as to who I'm addressing with this legislation, the owners of Stop and Goes. They're referring to themselves as beer delis now, which I think is laughable, because I've been a Philadelphian all my life, and I know what a deli is. And this isn't that. You can't get a pastrami on rye in any of these places. So let me be clear as to who this bill addresses. This bill is for establishments that sell beer and or shots of liquor, cold medicine that can be converted into drugs to get high, crack pipes and other drug paraphernalia, fruit-flavored cigarellos, and candy and snacks for children. Sometimes they sell food, mostly they don't. They only exist in vulnerable neighborhoods where self-medication happens frequently. They aren't delis, they're places to buy products to get high. They're the modern-day pusher, a legal storefront pro-addiction center, an indoor open-air drug market. It's the get-on place in the neighborhood. Masquerading as restaurants, they sell almost everything you need to get high. And if they don't have it, often someone loitering inside or outside has the rest. You see the addicted, clearly intoxicated, drinking a shot of liquor, standing in the small area aloud while neighborhood children mingle and consume chips and candy. Who can defend this? How can anyone defend this? We don't allow children in bars for a reason, and yet we have a hybrid bar, liquor store, beer distributor operating right now in these very vulnerable communities. If they were selling hypodermic needles synonymous with using heroin, there would be an, an immediate call to shut these places down. But selling crack pipes and cheap, cheap alcohol, well, let's just admit it, that it's a different kind of addict, so they get a different kind of response. As a member of council, I believe my job is somewhat like a police officer just without a badge, sworn to protect and serve all people. It's our responsibility to bring the community together, not to promote a war of what-if violence of any kind. Our job is to bring forth solutions and peace in the communities we serve and not irresponsibly incite even the potential of violence and division. What seems to be forgotten here 
is that these businesses have licenses to operate as restaurants. And that is what this bill is requiring them to do. That's not what they are right now. When was the last time you got a serving of NyQuil at a restaurant? But you can get it at these establishments. I've never heard so many people defending a group of businesses that were primarily focused on selling people things that would allow the continuance of an addiction, all under the guise of safety first. Well, let me be the first to tell you that you've been had. Now, I have no doubt that safety is a real concern, a significant concern. When we talk to businesses and those with those concerns about the removal of bulletproof glass, we also talked about lighting, cameras, security guards with wands, individual assessments from security professionals, all to be told no, the only option is glass. Well, let me say this. I have an agreement that was signed by Mr. Chu and Mr. Murphy representing the Asian American Licensed Beverage Association, or known as ALBA. It's an agreement dated December 16, 2004, nearly 13 years ago to the day, in which they agreed to hire security guards. It's signed by the very people who now say no to security guards. This document, which Councilwoman Blackwell worked on since 1993, 25 years, this document states that they will stop selling drug paraphernalia. It reads, ALBA, through its members, shall no longer sell items that are associated with the use of illegal drugs. These items include, but are not limited to, rolling papers or cigar wraps that can commonly be used for rolling tobacco, any forms of glass stems that are used for pens, straight shooters, or roses. And as it becomes apparent over time, any product that can be primarily used for drugs. What it doesn't say is that those papers are currently used for smoking marijuana and other substances. And what it doesn't say is that those forms of glass stems are used as crack pipes. It also states regarding education and training that ALBA shall assist its members to seek out and successfully complete responsible alcohol management training programs, which essentially means that you have to know when to cut people off. You can't serve people who are visibly intoxicated. Regarding safety and security, it reads, members locations that have experienced a high pattern, a pattern of high levels of criminal activity as determined mutually by the ALBA and the community groups shall submit a security response plan to ALBA, including but not limited to the use of increased community town watch personnel on a volunteer basis, if available, and or the deployment of private uniform security personnel in the immediate vicinity of the licensed premises on a regular and continuous basis if the need arises. That's in their document. The bylaws attached to this document further states that ABBA will, among other things, completely abolish the sale of loose cigarettes, completely abolish the sale of new and unused glass vials, which are frequently used as drug paraphernalia, specifically for the packaging of crack cocaine and PCP for illegal street sales. This is in their document. A security and surveillance video camera that shall be maintained to cover interior the interior area of the front entrance, seating area, and counter area of the premises. Bathroom use shall be limited to employees and paying customers only. The bathroom shall remain locked at all times in accordance with city health ordinances. A bathroom key shall be provided to a paying customer upon request and upon the discretion of the store manager only. The licensee shall take all necessary and reasonable steps to enhance the percentage of food revenue on the premises, including the immediate advertising of food specials on the menu, the reasonable pricing of food items on the store menu, and the immediate price increase of takeout malt beverages, especially single 40-ounce containers of malt beverages for on- and off-premises consumption, and the continuing effort to ensure that minors neither purchase nor consume alcohol the premises shall immediately acquire and maintain an identification verification machine 
in the front counter area and shall be utilized by all employees whenever a valid identification is, is requested and produced by the customer. All licensees and their alcohol serving staff shall immediately undergo a success and successfully complete the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board sponsored responsible alcohol management program training. A valid certificate of completion shall be posted in a conspicuous location on the premises. Operating hours shall be curtailed. Licensees shall close for business on or before 1 a.m. from Sunday night through Thursday night and 2 a.m. on Friday night and Saturday night. And so here we have this document signed by the leaders of ALBA acknowledging that their members sell drug paraphernalia including blunt wrappers and crack pipes. Acknowledging that their members need better training and to be more responsible regarding serving alcohol. Acknowledging that their members sell products, other products, to get you high, cold and allergy medicines, etc. Acknowledging that their members would hire security guards. My question to Alba is, how much of this have you done? Some of it? Any of it? I think I have the answer. None of it. You found out you didn't legally have to do it, so you did nothing, except stay, staying the neighborhood get high spot in the area. Here is what you did. You came to council, Mr. Chu and Michelle, the owners of Wayne Junction Deli, and you brought with you someone that we met in your establishment that admitted he sold Lucy's in front of the Channel 6 news crew that was with us. And you're the owner of this, of this establishment and the leader of this uh, organization. You created a culture and climate of foolishness in your business and in city neighborhoods. You preyed upon addicts, people with a habit, a dependency that forced them to seek you out. This is not a willing customer. How many lives were destroyed by your encouraging hand? Those who opposed the bill have told me, said to me, that I could have blood on my hands. But you do have blood on your hands. The blood of the thousands that have and continue to fight their addiction every day. And the blood of those. And the blood of those that we have lost. How many families have been destroyed by these operations that sell dollar beers to people already intoxicated? We'll never be able to count them, but we all know some of them. By opposing this bill, you stand against the people and the community, and you stand the with the dealer, no matter what their hue or their ethnicity. A dealer is a dealer is a dealer. And you did all of this for years. Your document acknowledges conversation and work on this issue since 1993. It took 11 years to get Alba to the table with a document. And then Alba walked away from this document as quickly as it could. That was 2004. This is 2017, almost 18. This is a 25 plus year journey. And now stop and go owners still don't want to change. Do we have to wait another 25 years for change? Maybe 50 years? I think not. This business model is over. It's done. There's only one way for it to go, all of us to go, and that's forward. This bill will conform the city with state law allowing for enforcement. And time's up. We're going to say goodbye to the breakfast booze spots and the like, taking our communities back. You are invited to join us, or you can make your decision not to. But what was is just that, what was in past tense. There's no looking back and there's no going back. There is only going forward. This is a forward march. And we're all going. Black, white, brown, Asian, it doesn't matter. We're all going. We're all moving Philadelphia forwards, all neighborhoods together. Some are going to walk. Some are going to have to be pulled forward. But we're going to stop leaving Philadelphia neighborhoods behind. And it starts now. Thank you, Mr. President.